I'm Mark Bremer, and welcome to the seventh movie in the tutorial series from Renderosity about Poser 10 and Poser Pro 2014. In this movie, we'll be speaking about posing, and not just moving body parts around, but we'll do it with an eye towards animation. There's some ways to utilize some of the shortcuts built into Poser to make your life a lot easier, and there's multiple ways to work with characters. Obviously, in this one, we're going to be working with a human character, but there are many machines and types of things that you can use inside Poser that also can be posed. And by posed, I mean simply manipulated, say, doors opening on cars, that type of thing. Human figures and animal figures usually present the largest challenge, though, because we are so accustomed to seeing them that if anything's wrong, we pick it up right away. So we'll look at ways to kind of prevent that uncanny valley, as they say in the Hollywood terms, and look at ways to better utilize some of the tools. Now, I have chosen the stock character that comes with Poser called Ryan. This is Ryan Casual. And the reason I've chosen him is that he's one of the most sophisticated characters that they have. And by sophisticated, I mean there are tons of shortcuts built into Ryan's physical makeup that make posing and working with him so much easier than working with some of the legacy content. Let's first talk about how you get in and select body parts to start moving them around. Really basic, so I'm not going to you know bore you to death, at least I hope I won't. But as you know, when you roll your cursor over the character, you see different body parts that highlight. This is called the direct selection method. So if I want to manipulate his arm here, for example, I can click on it. The white outline turns instead red. We know this is active. And since we're very aware of the fact now that we've got a dynamic interface, meaning that different items you select in the scene change how the interface presents, we now have controls here in the properties palette here to go ahead and click and drag. We can twist the forearm side to side such as that. Now you can do a direct manipulation. We've already done the direct selection. So these are dial manipulations over here in the properties palette. But using any of the translate tools or the twist or the rotate tools here and in fact you can actually use uh, scale tools if you want to create uh, creatures instead. But we can simply click and move this around. Now that's nice, but watch what's going on here. If I pull my character to a little bit uh, to one side here, we see that it starts maneuvering all the body parts. This is both a blessing and a curse, depending on how you happen to be working with your characters. So if we just wanted to move a singular body part, we don't want to affect any other parts of the character, utilizing the parameter dials over here is probably your best method because you can go ahead and move body parts by themselves without influencing any of the rest of the character. However, if you want some believable type of motion where maybe you move a body part over here and it, it moves the character somewhere else just a little bit, then working with a direct manipulation can be beneficial. The problem I personally have with this is that when you're working in a view like this and you have a single view instead of maybe an entire split screen where you've got either two or four views is that you can misplace body parts and uh, that's just the reality of working with it. Now suppose you're working with a character you don't like what you've done with it and it's like man it took me a while to get here how do I get it back to the basic settings super easy just come up to figure come down to zero figure and we go back into the standard T position here now, this is true for characters that come from Smith Micro and Poser. Some characters that you buy later on, uh, or you may have already, don't necessarily have this zero default position. They come in with their arms down at their sides. So when you select a zero, it's not going to return the arms to the sides. It will simply go ahead and extend them into this T position, which is a standard format for any type of characters across many, many platforms and 3D software. Now, I'd mentioned Ryan was a sophisticated character. This is going to come into play in how we pose certain body parts and how you can take shortcuts with things that are built into the character. If we want our character Ryan to have a fist, I could come in and individually move all these fingers. Let me come over here and select the left hand camera so we zoom in real close to that. And we see the hand right here. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit so we can see better. This is a ton of work because there are lots of joints. And in fact, 
the early days of uh, cartoons, the reason the characters usually have only three fingers is because it's so the animators have less work to do when they animate things. So let me show you what I mean about built-in shortcuts. Right now, since I switched the camera, we have the main camera selected in the scene. We have to come up here to Body, Body Parts. Let's go to Left Collar Parts. And I will go ahead and come down to Left Hand. When I do this, our interface changes. And over here in the Properties palette, we have, well, hand controls. And this is kind of nice because these are built-in posing shortcuts. We see there's some dials right here. And I again, I have to say that some of the older content that comes with Poser does not have all of these controls. They are built as morphs, and we haven't covered that yet. So you can build these controls for the legacy characters. The new ones just happen to come with them already pre-built. So if we're making a fist for our character here, I can go ahead and uh, click on the dial here and grasp. This saves hours and hours of time. We can also have individual ones for thumb bend if we're going to go ahead and have our character, for example, say grasping a glass or something like that. We can go ahead and rotate the hand, for example, if we do side to side, or we go ahead and twist this and we get it so he could hold a glass, then we can go ahead and say, okay, let's grasp a little bit. Maybe that's enough for the fingers, for the thumb itself, if I happen to open that up or move it to the side. And this is where it might be beneficial to go ahead and do some direct selection when you're in close. In this case, we can grab, say, the twist controls. and Maybe I want this to go over to the side a little bit so I can grab the rotate controls and pull this over and get our character ready to do some fine motor controls for certain types of grasping actions. This is useful if you've got a sword or something like that and you want to parent a prop to a hand so you can create that grasp motion, make it linked to the hand on the hierarchy. We'll cover that later on in a different movie. But this is how you can come in and use some of the pre-built controls. Let's come up to the face cam, for example. Most of the earlier characters that come with Poser have injection morphs for creating expressions, smiles and things like that, and you have to inject them and then work with them. Again, this is where the newer characters have everything built into them already. If I come up here and we come to body parts, neck parts, and I choose head, we'll see that our parameter dials happen to change again. They're very similar up here, but down below we've got the head morphs that are already built in. So if we wanted to change our character's look just a little bit, we can inject some of these other characters that are pre-built in and get some interesting looks. If we come down to head expressions, and let me close up the ethnicity panel right here, we can come to total head expressions or face expressions, and I'll disclose this. Obviously, we've got independent categories for each one of those listed areas right there. But, for example, if we just wanted to have, well, gosh, Ryan is just a happy guy today, and we're going to give him a little bit of joy, too. That is actually quite creepy looking, but uh, still creepy looking. Well, okay, we'll make him laugh a little bit. Here's the funny part of working with characterizations. You really have to spend a little bit of time, even with these dials, to maybe create some expressions that are a little more believable than others. Just a little insight, and you'll watch animated movies much differently after this, but typically what they will also do with characterizations is to go ahead and create a symmetry. Make sure not everything is the same on each side. So if I happen to come down to eye expressions right here, and we can go ahead and close one eye just a little bit more. If we've got eyes squinting, let's see, that's both, but we've got left-right capabilities here where we can go ahead and change individual sides or raise eyebrows if we want to, to go ahead and make the face, what I will say, is easier to look at because it's not perfect. So introducing one eyebrow higher than another, those types of things are standard animation tricks when you work with animated characters. Let's come back and select our main camera. Show you another way to begin working with characters right here. If we come over to, and I need to open a window, let's come down and open our library. I had that closed so we've got a larger view. Let's come over to Pose. Now this is going to take us into this kind of gray area between posing a character and animating a character. This is a nice shortcut way to work with pre-built capabilities inside of Poser to go ahead and get your characters to do what you want them to do. So with the 
close area selected right here. Let me go ahead and make this just a little bit larger. I'll grab this and drag it over. We'll come down to Poser 2014 content and people. Most characters have poses that have been especially built for them and it has to do with how the body parts intersect. You can go ahead and if you disclose Ben and we come down here a little bit to Ryan, you'll see many, many poses that are actually the same. Let me come into these categories here. Action, sitting, standing, all these characters have these same categories. However, the geometry is manipulated differently based on the scale of their arms, their body, that type of thing. So let me disclose sitting right here. And let's say, what do we have? Oh, park bench looks good. I'll click on this, it gets a little bit larger, and we can see that we've got our character sitting on a bench. Now, I don't have a bench in the scene, but if I want to apply this pre-built pose so I don't have to bend all the body parts, I simply come down and click on the Apply to Original Pose. Now, it's always good. This is just me. Sometimes it has to do with how the poses are built. I like to select the full body before I inject a particular kind of pose. I'll click this. It thinks about it for a second. And, well, it continues to think about it. There we go. Now you'll notice our character happens to be floating in the sky. And this is because the hip is the primary place where the skeleton starts. So everything moves around the hip. This is not unusual. That's just how this happens to work. So what I would do at this point is say, well, let's get it so his feet are on the floor. And we're going to have kind of a compound pose. One pose trans or morphing into another pose, translating into that. So with the Y translation, I'm simply going to click on the parameter dial and we'll lower him down as if we had a bench in the scene. What I would like our character to do is to stand up. We haven't covered keyframes. This is really important because it goes with keyframes. We'll deal with that a little bit more later. But let's come down and make this really easy on ourselves and click and drag the time marker here to say 20 frames. What I want to do now is find not a sitting pose, but let's go ahead and come to a standing pose. And let's just have our character, I don't know, arms crossed, standing there like this, that would be fine. Now we are further down in time. So when I apply this pose, the first pose will remain back at what's called keyframe or frame zero. And then we're going to get a new pose. So I'm going to go ahead and select this new one and suddenly our character happens to be well standing in mud. So let's raise him back up out of the ground. We'll come back to the Y translate dial, body selected, and we'll raise him up. Now we'll see his feet slide. I'm going to grab this time marker right here and we see we have a little bit of motion going on right here like this. I want him to stand up where his feet are when he's sitting, so he's going to have to lean forward. You'll notice in this pose translation that the character doesn't obey the law of physics. He just kind of glides into that next position, and it saved me a ton of posing time when this happens. However, we need to make some fixes. So part of it is, let me look about where his feet are. We could be very precise later on. Let me come back to, let's see, it's right there. Come back to frame 20. I'm going to grab the Y translate dial and move our character forward just a little bit. The next thing we would want to do here is say, okay, we'll do a little direct manipulation here possibly. About at this point where the character's getting ready to get up, I'm going to select his waist by clicking on that. Or hip area, actually let me select above the hip because I don't want that to waste. And I'll say, okay, let's go ahead and bend this forward just a little bit. I may move this arm out just a little, so I'm going to select the forearm. Let's go ahead and bend this up. See if we want to twist it out. No, side to side. This arm is coming down, and what we've done is created kind of three separate poses here. So we have him sitting. He leans forward to get up and then stands up and crosses his arm. So there is a way to work with the pre-built poses that come in and save yourself a ton of time from selecting individual body parts. So everything put back together. We've got the ability to select body parts and use the tools to manipulate them. 
we can select body parts either directly or with the pull down menu and use the parameter dials to move them and then we've got a nice collection of presets in the library to go ahead and get characters into pre-built poses I didn't cover inverse kinematics which is how feet are and hands can be set up in a different way to animate your character and center of gravity we will deal with that more when we get into animation aspects but there are the simple ways to work with and pose figures inside of Poser 2014 and Poser 10.